Welcome back to the channel YouTube and welcome back to our series looking at classic Call of Duties from the past and in today's episode we are going back to what is officially described as the first Black Ops game by Treyarch and that is Call of Duty World at War and uh, yeah I have a little story to tell you about this one and my memories about the game but Please be warned, this is quite graphic to start with, so if you're a bit squeamish, you might want to jump forward a little bit. Without further ado, let's do it! Megan Atoll. Little more than sand, trees, and a small Japanese military base. Miller's reconnaissance team landed there almost a week ago. Since then, we've heard nothing. The waiting's over. We're going in. For all we know, they're already dead. If what little we know about the Japanese is true, it might be better if they are. You think because you say nothing. You are strong? Samawa Tsukumai. Don't tell him a fucking thing. Behead of my Konoka. Go to hell. Isama wa tsuyoku nai. Miller, you're okay. Thank God. We're gonna make them pay for what they've done. Fuckers. So as I've stated in the past, Treyarch are probably my favourite developers of a Call of Duty game. I didn't realise World at War was a Treyarch game, even though I've played it, but I haven't played it on console before, so this is a first in the um, footage you're seeing today. And I love this game. This game had something that I hadn't seen before. It had a very, very kind of dark and raw feeling and I, I, I don't know what it is I, I've tried to put my finger on it in the last couple of days since I started playing the campaign again and it just this game was made in the time before political correctness was really a thing and so 
A lot of what you're going to see is very raw, very real, and probably some people would get upset about it in the current kind of social climate. But back then, you really, this this was a golden Call of Duty, and many, many people talk with fondness about uh, this Call of Duty in being one of it because it was just unique. It broke ground. It, it I think it, um, it showed you a side of war that you probably had heard about but hadn't seen in such a graphic uh, context and um, yeah we we meet Reznov, Reznov sorry, for the first time in this game and um, that continues a storyline all the way through the Black Ops series which I absolutely love and um, yeah we start we start today in the Pacific um, theatre of war um, and to certainly the, the footage we're, we're showing now and, and for today is only going to be confined to the Pacific but you know, I grew up in an era where, um, my, you know, the grandparents and the older people in the community had, had come through World War Two, which is the focus of this game. And also, my uncles uh, served um, in the 50s and 60s in, in Malaya and Burma and places like that. So, um, you know, I used to hear these stories, and 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 you will find with some people who have been servicemen, they're reluctant to tell you these stories. So. Um, I had heard a few uh, stories from my uncles and, and grandparents and stuff like that and, and having then played this game it just kind of um, resonated with me from from my own, own upbringing and um, you know what had actually gone on and the way that Treyarch covers this the events of World War 2 now it's not the story I want to tell you today the story I want to tell you is about how I actually played this campaign and yes we are playing the campaign today I thought I'd switch it up and do something a little bit different and I want to do that with the different Call of Duties we, we will cover some of the Zombies games as well during this kind of retrospective look back at the older Call of Duties but yeah, you know, I wanted to hop in and play a campaign I haven't played the multiplayer of this game so we might show you some of that too at some point in the near future but I want you to hop in the campaign and tell you the story of how I actually played the campaign because I've never ever played this campaign on a console before in fact I had to play it on a PC in, in the past and I think I've played it in two different times this game came out in 2008 and that would make it, I don't know, it would be, what was that, Windows Vista or something? I mean, XP is, is still around now, but it was it was still pretty popular, but I think it would have been Vista that this, this game was on back in 2008. And for G4 back in 2008, G4 was travelling a lot. I was travelling quite extensively across the region. So, uh, from my memories, uh, I did have a PlayStation 3. I don't think I, I was playing on it. I, I don't think I was playing on it at all. I think my son might have taken it because I just didn't have the time. I was too busy working. I was too busy travelling. And so, I, you know, I, I didn't ha really get time to play consoles back then. But I did, I, you know, I'm a gamer at heart and I did want to find a way of playing games. So the only, I was spending a lot, a lot of times on aeroplanes and in hotels and, and, and I was flying a lot back, back in 2007, 2008 for work. In fact, because I live where I live, there are a lot of the countries I'm flying to were like eight and nine hour trips, some up to 14 hours, even longer than that, just depending where I was going. So spending a lot, a lot of time on aeroplanes. And so I, I'd bought myself a PSP and I'd pl playing games like, um, like God of War and SOCOM and stuff like that. But you know, if, if you've ever played on the PSP, I've still got my PSP somewhere. And um, yeah, that screen's very, very tiny. Uh, but it was it was okay as a stopgap. But um, when I was travelling, I had a laptop. But it was against the company policy to put third-party software on the laptop. So I was a bit a bit apprehensive about doing anything there. But eventually, what I, I did decide to do, and this was the first game that I did it with, was. Uh, uh, and again, I'm, I'm presuming that I had a, a copy of, uh, I bought a copy on disc of Call of Duty World at, World at War, which I can't find now. I don't know where it's going. I don't know what I've done with it. It might be sitting in a, um, in a laptop bag somewhere or I threw it in when I sold my 360. I'm really, really not sure. But um, 
I, I loaded that game onto my laptop and I used to play it in planes and in hotels as I was travelling the campaign. And um, you can imagine back then what the kind of... <laughs> I, don't, I don't know even the gaming laptops were invented or gaming PCs were invented back then. It was just a, a work laptop, so... Um, it wasn't the best experience, I've got to say, and I don't, I don't think even back then that we had support for, um, like, PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360 controllers, because I can't remember using a controller to play play the campaign. But, yeah, I used to sit for hours with headphones on on this, this crappy little work laptop and play the campaign, and the immersion was just amazing with this game, and so I've very very fond memories of playing this f campaign for the first time and um, just been blown away by it coming back to 2023 and looking at now it, it, it has still got something about it that um, I've continued to play the campaign after I've done this recording and I, and, and, and just absolutely love loving playing that um, I do think that I played it again maybe around 2016, 2017 on my Mac, on my iMac and uh, that was probably a much better experience. That would have been certainly done with a with an Xbox 360 controller plugged in into the USB but when I first played this game it was just, just I just loved it and it, it, it was a first of a few that actually <laughs> sneaked onto my laptop. To, to pass away the hours. I've got to say though, coming back to it, it's it's interesting to see a game like this coming back to it because there's there's no bells and whistles on this thing. You're going back to you know these these period correct guns or weapons in the game, and there's not there's not really what you would deem attachments or optical sights or anything on them. You know we're we're going back to bare bones, the Gewehr the um, M1 Garand Type 100 and you'll see in the footage there's I, I, I can't recall what it is but there is a, a, a I don't know if it's an assault rifle or if it's a, a LMG that I pick up and, and the sight is just off on it how you would be able to kill anything on this is, is beyond me you know, I was pl playing around with the, the BAR the Browning Automatic Rifle the other day and the recoil's real on that um, there's a Thompson in this game um, there is a PPSH in this game but I haven't been able to get my hands on it in the campaign just quite yet and so you know these, these are all iconic guns but I, I, I tell you what it's, it, it's, it's not an easy game to play there's something off with the hit detection it just feels like there's something off on the new consoles with the hit detection but I've got to say the game still looks fantastic still plays fantastic just takes you a little bit of time to get your head around now one thing I would ask it did say on the wiki when I uh, was researching this that you could play this this was, game was available on the Wii and there was a special uh, thing that you bought some kind of pistol or some kind of thing that you played this game on or used to play this game on the Wii and I just wonder if any of you out there in um, in YouTube land remember doing that because I'd be very interested to know what the, the game felt like on Wii I mean we had a we had a Wii probably back then I'm not quite sure um, but I, I wouldn't ever consider playing a Call of Duty on, on the Wii back then and so yeah I, I mean everything about this game is just takes me back and really fills me with fond memories as you might can tell by my commentary and um, yeah I'm going to stop waffling now but I thought I'd, I'd like to share the, the story with you, I'll stop waffling now and you can enjoy the rest of the campaign this game is on sale at the moment in the Xbox store It didn't. it's not going to cost you too many uh, spawn duelers to pick it up so if you really like this gameplay I'd, I'd highly recommend you get into the campaign and play it if you haven't already it is a great campaign and if you're a fan of these types of games I think you'll really like this one okay guys that's it from me let's turn the uh, volume up to 11 and you can get immersed in the rest of this footage thanks for watching catch you next time see ya
here. Get back here. Charges where it does. It better not be. <laughs> Years after the raid on Macon, we're heading up an all-out assault on Peleliu Island. No POWs to rescue this time. Our mission? Take the airfield and cripple their supply network. Alongside familiar faces, fresh-faced recruits. The older guys like Miller, Sergeant Sullivan, and myself. We're known as the old breed. Old, we're not even out of our twenties.
get a piece on you! Move! Move! What the hell went wrong? There wasn't supposed to be any resistance! That rocket strike should have softened them up! Stay down! What do we do? Get moving! Everyone ready? Find the sword! Up and over!
flanking position!
now, Sarge. Secure the surrounding area. Wait for the Major's orders. Why do we rest? Soon, Kowalski. Whatever the cost. 